hi again. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Samantha and I'm a product marketer at Hacker Earth. Before we begin, please note that this session is being recorded and a copy of the recording will be emailed to you. If you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to type them onto the question box that you see on your Zoom control panel. We'll collect these and address them towards the end of the session. A quick introduction about Hacker Earth. We are a global company that helps large enterprises source, screen, interview, upskill, and continuously engage with developers and data science talent. Hacker Earth for Enterprises is an integrated suite of solutions that, employ, that, that empower companies to manage the entire developer lifecycle, start a skill-based hiring practice, and speed up their recruitment cycle using our coding assessments and real-time interviewing tool called FaceCode. Hacker Earth is also a leading facilitator of online hackathons and coding challenges where its community of over 5 million developers can upskill and practice for interviews while companies can attract and source top developer talent globally. Today, we'll be talking about what happens when hiring partners hinder the hiring process and what you as recruiters can do to build better partnerships with them so they no longer become obstacles to great recruitment. I have here with me today an amazing guest, She's an excellent thought leader on a mission to energize the human connection between HR, recruiters, and hiring managers, all for better recruitment and candidate experience. She is the author of The Robot Proof Recruiter, <laughs> a well-loved global keynote speaker, and the host of the Hiring Partner Perspective podcast. She's also the founder of Disrupt HR London and an ambassador for Hope for Justice, which aims to end modern day slavery. Please join me in welcoming Katrina Collier. Katrina, it's an absolute Hi. honor and pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I believe, actually, hang on, you guys are on page uh, 173. <laughs> Hacker Earth, make it in. <laughs> Thank you. So do you want me to just put my slides up? Shall we yes, start absolutely. there? Or? Yeah, Absolutely. okay, Take so hang on if I go, oh, hang on if I just go share screen. So what do you do when hiring partners hinder the recruitment process and why is it unacceptable? Um, I love a GIF, so you might see a few of these. Um, is it your responsibility? Whose responsibility is it? So um, I, this is a little blunt. There's no cutting corners with what I'm about to say, but if we're going to fix these relationships, we need to we need to be very direct about it. So what's the problem? Why does any of it matter? Well, if you were to do a job search now in 2021 and you just typed in, you know, you're a tech recruiter and you type in tech recruiter jobs, okay, my case, London, because I'm here in London, UK, I'm going to get up this beautiful blue box on Google. Now, um, Google for jobs, as it might be called, or this blue box, it doesn't come up on every website, uh, sorry, in every country. Um, it certainly comes up in the US and it comes up in some of the European countries and some of the Asia Pac countries, but not all. However, it's really quite mind blowing when it does. It's a little like um, if you're gonna book a flight or shopping, how it really helps the person who's searching to see more information. So as a company or a recruiter, that's a problem because they're getting helped to see more information. So we've got to start behaving a bit more. So as you can see here, I've got this, you know, jobs near London and, and the different roles that are coming up. So uh, a mayor tech recruiter, tech recruiter, etc. So if I was to click into that blue box, obviously I could roll down and go into other results, but it's so tempting because I know that the blue box helps me to, you know, with the search results. So if I click in here, I can very easily narrow down the results. Um, so you'll see in the top um, right, left of the screenshot, I've clicked technical recruiter. I've narrowed it down to I'm a technical recruiter. That's what I want to see. And then I've rolled to the second one on the left, which is Revolut, because I'm looking for the company directly, not a recruitment agency. So when I get in here, I can see the job on the right hand side. I can see where it's posted. You know, Google has gathered all of these jobs together. They're trying to get rid of all the duplication of jobs that's out there. And then if I'm to click again, oh, sorry, if I'm then on the right hand side and I roll, I see the review sites. So no more is it job seeker has to know about Glassdoor and Indeed and Kanunu and uh, comparably and all the different, like there are about 20, I'm gonna show you in a sec different sites that review companies. No more do job seekers need to know about them. Here they are. I mean, I haven't even heard of OSHA, O-T-T-A, and it's got 
umpteen reviews, 141,000 reviews. So I'm sort of like, oh, that's interesting. Let me click in and have a look. Well, I'll stick with Glassdoor because we all know Glassdoor. They've got the loudest marketers. If I go into Glassdoor, I have the opportunity to look at the company. Or because I'm job seeking, I'm going to go and look at those interview reviews, aren't I? Well, the first interview review I see is this one. Technical recruiter interview. I interviewed at Revolut. So I'm, I, that's the job I'm looking for. Got invited to attend a first round. And the interview who interviewed me was so cold, lacking any people skills whatsoever and seemed disinterested. Lovely. Isn't that lovely? Can you imagine you go through all of that process to get to an interview to have somebody who was not interested in talking to me? Yeah, some relevant questions, but others weren't added no value, very robotic, overly formal. Yeah, bye bye. Moving on. Anybody who's recruiting recruiters at the moment knows it's really hard as well. There's a great shortage of really good recruiters. It's quite fascinating. Um, the very, very next review, I put them in date order and th they were two bad ones in a row. So if I'm looking at that company, I'm like, mm, yeah, not sure, not sure. Anyway, the next one is this operations manager role. I applied for a recruiter. I interviewed at Revolut. The interview process was very great in my opinion. The recruiter kept selling Revolut to me and I made it through the first round where I was given a case study but the interviewer felt quite unprepared, the interviewer. He also couldn't answer any of my questions about the role. So, and then also here, he was getting quite frustrated because I wasn't answering the questions. He was pushing for a solution. Now this operations manager was too savvy going, well, hang on a minute. You're really wanting me to solve your problem here. You're really just interviewing me for information, not to hire me. Didn't appreciate it. So you end up with a review that's no offer negative experience. And then these goes on. There are all of these places where people can vent. You know, the, you've got job case, you've got Yelp, you've got Fairy Godboss, but you didn't know you could write reviews on Yelp. Um, the job crowd rate my employer vault, comparably career bliss, inner sight, and indeed in Canuna, particularly here in Europe, Canuna is huge. Uh, indeed is global. And there'll be other sites in other countries as well. So there's so many places that people can write a review. And this is why it really, really matters. You don't need your hiring managers screwing up the process and as you saw there there was a recruiter and a hiring manager both being disinterested both not being very good at their job but who's actually responsible for that who should be going oh this interviewer doesn't know how to sell the opportunity or they're not very interested or the hiring manager is not good at interviewing or they don't know what they're after or they you know they need some more experience you know you've seen the reviews you know what I mean so who's responsible is it we, the recruiter, are we responsible for all of that? Do we need to get our hiring managers to be better at interviewing? No. Is it HR? Shouldn't HR, the people that look after the people, be the ones that making sure, if we tell them particularly, that the hiring managers get better at interviewing so that we don't get these reviews because we can't afford to get these reviews? I showed you how easy you can see them. Or is it your hiring managers? Should your hiring managers themselves be actually saying, hey, I need some help here? Uh, it's probably a combination of all three, but either way, it needs to change. Um, Samantha did such a brilliant job of introducing me. I will be very quick, um, but I just wanted to explain why I feel I can talk about this a little bit, a little bit more than what she just said. Um, I am author, keynote, and facilitator. I have had the incredible honour pre-pandemic of speaking on five continents. Um, I was also going to get the sixth continent before this little pandemic hit. But that's allowed me to not only stand on the stages and, and you know, share what I feel is my, my area of expertise and my strength, but it's meant I've got to learn. So I've got to see and hear all of these different presentations and be amongst recruiters from all different countries all around the world, which gives me a quite a unique perspective on this. Um, and it sort of helps recruiters come out of their bubbles. And of course, I am the author of The Robot Proof Recruiter, which I'm very proud of. And as I said, uh, Hacker Earther on page 173. Um, and I got a lot of help writing this book. There are about 74 of your industry peers who all contributed to it. And I've been mind blown by every single person who has purchased it. Um, I have seen it all around the world. It's, it's quite an awe inspiring ex um, just awe inspiring to have that happen. But what's so lovely is I donated the royalties from the from the Robot Proof Recruiter to Hope for Justice Charity. So if you have purchased a copy, you are helping this charity, which aims to end modern day slavery, impacting about 40 million people globally. It's, it's dreadful. Um, and of course, the podcast that's already been mentioned. But I am on this mission. I think if we fix the connection between HR, 
recruiters and talent acquisition, whether they're internal or external, and the hiring managers, we're going to be really on to something as far as fixing candidate experience. So that's what I'm up to. So if you come and connect with me or follow me, that's what I'm talking about all the time. So I believe there are three things that you can do to really start fixing this problem. You know, these hiring managers, they're not interviewing well, or they're just not giving you good job descriptions or whatever they're doing, and they're really impacting your future ability to recruit. If you are recruiting people who have skills that are in demand, healthcare, plasterers randomly, like building trades, they're a shortage, uh, anybody in tech, those sorts of areas, you're always gonna struggle. Uh, and again, recruiters, recruiting recruiters is quite hard. So um, have a look at the book, chapter five. Um, actually, if you, if you uh, stay through carefully, I'm gonna give a book away as well. So watch this space uh, coming up in a bit. But chapter five, I go into the big intake strategy session. So never forget this one thing. This is so, so important to your recruiting. You are not an order taker. So when you have that intake strategy session with the hiring manager, when you sit down, preferably, well, it might be online these days, but you know, sit down. <laughs> I've lost my pre-pandemic terminology and it should come into the pandemic. But when you have that conversation, that one hour of time, hopefully it's more than one hour with them to get everything from them, you're not an order taker. You don't accept a job description that's flung at you that's possibly three years out of date and no meeting with the hiring manager. You have to speak to them. You have to start building the trust and getting the information that they're not sharing and also making sure they're not being unrealistic. We play as recruiters with people's lives. So you play with people's lives and you heavily influence the company's future. So what I mean by that is if you take somebody from one job and you put them in another job and it doesn't work and they're out the door in three months, that can monumentally impact their life. They might be able to pick up another job. They might end up homeless. It's that serious what we do. And I think we forget that day to day when we're being overwhelmed with applications and we're in the thick of it, we're not thinking about that. So please always remember that every day. What we do is an honor. We get to you know, really change people's lives, but we also influence the company's future. So, and again, I think that's a bit of an attitude shift we need to have. So we bring in the people that make the company succeed. The finance department doesn't make the company to succeed. Any department doesn't make the company succeed. The people do. Wrong people, it's gonna fail. So again, something for us to remember all the time as recruiters. So order takers basically do this. They will be people pleasers. Now, a lot of people think it's great to be a people pleaser. It's not. You need to learn to say no. No is not a bad thing. You can't make everybody happy. People pleasers will accept the ridiculous job description from three years ago that is out of date and start trying to work to that and muddy the brand, like the company brand, the employer brand, your brand by doing so. They'll work from those old job specs that I just talked about. So they'll accept excessive must-haves. So by that is your hiring manager gives you 20 you must have these when you know really they just need four they'll be ridiculous and actually in that intake is your time to start going well hang on let's just run a job search and see how many people oh, sorry a people search and see how many people have those 20 and you'll find it's like five people in the whole of the world and you can start removing the excessive must-haves they'll also sieve unsuitable applications so they'll put out the job description it'll be too broad they'll get tons and tons of applications and instead of perhaps headhunting for somebody or only receiving a small number of applications, they'll spend all day going through hundreds and hundreds of CVs or resumes, depending what country you're in, <laughs> to what word you want to use. Um, and also they don't get given time for research, for learning or for trying new methods. Um, I have had heads of talent acquisition be very proud to tell me that their teams are maxed out and they have no time to learn. Um, I was horrified. Um, I don't know how I didn't swear when she said it to me because I was just so incredibly horrified. You need time to learn and to grow and to try something new and to just breathe. Uh, it's just so incredibly important. Um, and you feel unsupported because if you're not getting those things, if you don't feel like you can push back, you feel unsupported. So of course the opposite, <laughs> the ones that we've got this were recruitment partners. I'm all about that word partnership. I believe a recruiter and a hiring manager are working together to fill the role. So the difference is it's an attitude shift. You set boundaries. 
you have a service level agreement in place with your hiring manager. I'm going to do this, you're going to do this, and together we're going to fill the role. It's a very different attitude. It's not, okay, yes, 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 thank you, boss, I'll do that. Yes, yes, yes. It's together we're going to fill the role. This is the work that I'm going to do to do that, and this is what I need you to do in these kind of timeframes. Are you okay with that? Not okay with that? And back and forth until you come to an agreement. So important. A lot of the problems with hiring managers is they don't understand what we do. We don't take the time to explain to them that the CVs don't fall from the sky magically into the inbox and therefore in front of them. So it's really important you actually tell them what you're going to do so they understand the work that's involved, uh, you know, or, and or just everything that's involved. It's a lot, right? I'm sure you know that. I don't need to tell you that. So work from a proper intake strategy session. Okay, again, chapter five, um, maybe you'll win a book. Uh, but do that, spend that extra time, ask really good questions, really get under the skin of what this job is, what the team is, what are they coming in to do? What's the role look like in six months, in 12 months, in five years? What's the growth potential? Reduce those must-haves. Okay, so you want all of these, which ones can go? Which ones don't you need? What's really essential here? What can be taught? Yeah, cut down, cut down, cut down, get to just a couple. People can learn, you've got to hire for the attitude, people can learn the rest. Source suitable and diverse applicants. Again, this comes back to being able to have boundaries, to push back, to be a bit fearless. A lot of the stuff I teach in my mastermind course is all about that challenging the hiring manager's thinking to say, look, trust me, I've got this. How about talking to this person? Just trust me, you should. And then you can open the pool up. Most of us aren't aware. We don't see our own biases. So again, if you've got that great relationship, you can do that. You must insist on time for research and for learning and for trying new methods and just seeing, is there another possibility here? And of course, you'll get that if you feel supported. If your hiring manager, or, uh, sorry, not your hiring manager, your head of talent acquisition or your director of HR, or whoever it is, has your back, you'll be able to do this. But I'll tell you something. Oh, no, I've got one more. Sorry, I did mention the Robot Proof Recruiter Mastermind just briefly then. It's the 12-month course that I run. And it is things like this is one of the feedbacks because she learned to set boundaries, deliver clarity, so be really clear about what she was doing. She was able to, in this case, she's actually working as a third party, but she was able to go in with such confidence into that meeting that she signed, sealed and delivered it on the spot because she sort of said, well, this is the, what is acceptable behavior to me. If I'm going to work to do this incredibly important recruitment for you, this is, she was really clear about that. And therefore they understood exactly where they stood and it was signed, sealed, delivered. So just, you know, be aware there is help out there to help you with all of this. If you want to develop those skills, because the robots can replace one of those, the order taker or the recruitment partner. And you bet it's that order taker. So, You'd be very, very aware of that all the time. So do you have your phone in front of you? Um, I can't see the comments, so I'm just going to hope you do. Um, if you open your camera on your phone, those of you who've got uh, the, you know, the, I don't know what they're called, iPhone. Sorry, it's, I'm really not good at 4.20 in the afternoon. <laughs> the words sometimes get tongue-tied. Um, if you uh, open that with your camera, it will open a pop-up on my website. And if you pop your contact details in there, I will do a draw. Uh, for a signed copy of my book and post it out to you. So if you want to do that, I'll just give you a minute to do that. Uh, oh, I can see a Q&A question. Uh, oh, uh, yes. Uh, oh, I'm going to hopefully say this correctly. Anu Rada, um, please tell me how you went to the first uh, page, the job search page in the presentation. So that was literally into Google. Um, and because here we had that Google for jobs, so when I put in Recruiter Jobs London and hit enter, up came that blue box. Um, and that's how I ended up there. And so then when I clicked in, I could see it. You may not have it in your country, but if you are recruiting in other countries, it may well be there. It's Google didn't roll it out everywhere. It's so good though. It's a bit like the old sales thing. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, I'm going to think that you guys have had enough time on that. If you haven't, tell me later, we can come back to it. So I'm going to move on to the next part. So you are having a bit of a shift of attitude. You're going from, I'm no longer an order taker to, hey, I'm, I'm here to be a recruitment partner. I'm going to partner you, Mr. or Ms. Hiring Manager. Together, we're going to fill this role. 
For your heads of recruitment, if you are a head of recruitment, your team needs you. So this little bit is aimed at your head of, okay? Just in case you're not, just think this is what this is aimed at. They need you. They need you to have their back. It's so incredibly important. Uh, oops, I clicked the wrong thing. Your most important task as a head of a talent acquisition or a recruitment function is to make your team better than you. I know it sounds really shocking. You just think you'd want to do that, wouldn't you? But I do see, of course, the ego gets in the way. And there are heads of talent acquisition or heads of recruitment out there who don't want their teams to be better than them because they don't want them to be, they don't want to show themselves up. But if you make your team better than you, then you'll get a promotion and you'll get to move up. But also the company will be successful. So, you know, please, please make your team better than you. Um, I just saw another Q&A. Uh, da, 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 da. I will come back to that question. Hi, Marvin. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Marvin knows me well. He knows I'm ranting. He's also in my book. Aren't you in my book? Um, so you want your team to partner with the business better as well, which you do, because it's so, so important. The more time that your team spends out, your recruiters spend out talking to the business, so not only knowing the hiring manager, but knowing all of the team, they will do better, but you may have to fight for it. You need to come out of the office, the online office, and start talking to the business heads. Start trying to get more information about it. Be proactive. What are your plans for the year ahead? How are you, you know, what are you recruiting? Maybe you need to pick up my, uh, my Adam's book here, you know, Agile Workforce Planning. Maybe you need to know more about workforce planning. Maybe you need to understand more about talent intelligence. You need to learn more, get out, understand what they're doing. Your team needs you to do that. The more proactive you are, the better it's going to be for your team because then they're less reactive. So fight for it. Don't, don't accept, oh, no, go over in your corner and just do what you're told. Fight for it. It really makes the difference between a company being successful or not successful. So the last thing you need to do, point three, is convert your hiring managers into hiring partners. There's, a two, there's two of you in this tango. Um, this is uh, chapter three, four, what have I written? Five of the book. Um, that together, you're going to fill this role. And I think if you start thinking that, no, you know what, together, we're doing this together. I'm not your servant. I, we're doing this together. It's a real shift in attitude. It'll really help. So you need to explain stuff to them. So if you're in a, in a partnership with them, you can explain things like, oh my gosh, the process is long-winded or people aren't being sold on the opportunity. Now, I appreciate this is a LinkedIn survey that I did with only 174 results, but look at how the majority of the people removed themselves from the process because it was long-winded or they weren't sold. It's like they really stood out. These are things that hiring managers create. Okay, if the process is really long, why is that? Oh, okay, I'm really not, I'm unsure about hiring. I haven't done this before. I don't know what I'm doing. I need some help. I, I don't want to make the wrong decision. It's a human problem again. Not sold on the problem, human, pro uh, not sold on the opportunity, human problem. So they're the sorts of things where I need to pull HR in to help me with this. We need some training going on. They need some support. So you get your HR BPs in as well as your recruitment. So this is all the human stuff that can easily be fixed. Um, of course, I mentioned these, you'll get really bad reviews. Um, this is one of my favourites because it's just so bad. I can't believe it. I'm not going to read the whole thing out, don't worry. That would be really boring. But this was quite early on in the pandemic, but it's going to stay there, stuck on this household name IT company's website for, or a review site forever. Um, here's this interviewer who came and did not turn his camera on or her camera on for that matter. It's actually a he, but refused to turn the camera on. So the poor candidate sitting there, fully exposed like I am now, talking to the wall. Now I'm quite used to it, but in an interview, I would feel incredibly uncomfortable. That's not on. Um, it's basically the equivalent of being interviewed in person with someone sitting with a paper bag on their head. But if you're in a partnership with your hiring managers, they'll be like, oh God, I wouldn't even consider doing that. My gosh, you know, we're together. We've got to fill these roles. And, um, the other thing to do, is, and I know it's a bit late in the game to be telling you this when we've been, you know, working from home for, for 15 months, but create a virtual walk to the interview. So 
when you turn up at a building for an interview, you greet the receptionist, you sit down and they offer you a glass of water or a coffee, whatever it might be. Then the interviewer comes to you and you walk to the office. And on the way, they'll be like, how was your trip here? Did you find it okay? Uh, can I get you anything? And so on. Are you relaxed? Are you ready? Let's go. So you've got those five minutes or so. You can do the same thing online and it will really help the process. Did you log in okay? Don't worry if you've got children or pets. Samantha was saying to me, can you hear my dog barking? Because there's been barking earlier. I'm like, don't worry about it. We're working from home. It doesn't matter. Um, my spaniel came in a few minutes ago. He's now sitting on my foot, which is quite warm. But, you know, don't worry. Are you expecting any deliveries? Doesn't matter. Got a cup of tea. Oh, there we go. Expecting deliveries and got a cup of tea. That sort of thing. Are you ready? Are you feeling relaxed? All set then? Let's go. I don't think a lot of hiring managers think about that. They come on and they're like, Phew sort of hit them again just give them those few minutes let the person on the other end of the video relax and then get going um and then you can just stop all of this so please stop never heard back stop no feedback this is a screenshot of what's called a, an x-ray search or um I'm using Google to search Glassdoor basically um I have asked Google to go to the site colon glassdoor.com so that is google search glassdoor for me on the interview pages that's what the slash interview is for never heard back in inverted commas so the three words together and you can see there's 14,000 results if i put in .co.uk for the uk you'll see there's about another five and on it goes anybody who has invested time interviewing in person inverted commas online whatever it is has had a proper face-to-face -face interview they deserve feedback there is no excuse for not giving feedback. Now in that um, intake strategy session, you can have that agreement. Now, the reason that we're going to have feedback, Mr. Ms. Hiring Manager, is because when we don't, we end up with really bad reviews that stops us from hiring in the future. Plus it's incredibly disrespectful to the person because they talk. You know, if you're hiring in technology, something like a third of um, developer recruitment is via referral. So, you know, you annoy one developer, they start talking amongst their people and then you can't recruit. So it's so important, but it's also, wouldn't you want feedback? You know, it's human. It's just closure is so, so important. Don't ghost people. So I'm at the end. I think I've done that perfectly on time, hopefully. Um, <laughs> there's lots of time for Q&A though. So create hiring partners by expecting nothing less than a joint effort. So if you're a recruiter and you're sitting hearing this and thinking, ah, no, it's a, almost a posture thing. It's just saying, I'm here to partner you to fill the role. Go into the meeting thinking that I'm here to partner you to fill this role. And then you'll start, it's a joint effort. They're my colleague, they're not my boss. They might be hiring manager, but they're not my boss. It's together we're filling the role. I'm an expert in recruitment. They're an expert in whatever it is they do. Together, we'll fill the role. Recruitment leaders, I need you to have your teams back. I need you to fight for them, fight for the corner, fight for the investment for training and for education and for time and for research and whatever they need, fight for them, okay? Make sure that all of the managers in the company right up to the top understand that you're there to bring in the people that make the company succeed. And of course, showing hiring managers the benefit of becoming a partner, which is, all of those things I've just shown you, no crappy reviews, making a future recruitment easier and that sort of stuff. So that's my presentation and we have loads of time for Q&A. Um, if you would like to join me on my mission, which is to energize that human connection between those three parties, HR recruiters and hiring managers, there's a few ways you can join me. Um, I do do this incredible facilitation. It's online in a couple of hours with specifically recruiters, hiring managers and HR to really unearth some of the big problems that are going on and get you well on your way to fixing them. Um, it's quite incredible facilitation. It's very, very cool. Of course, there's my book. Someone will have won one, but of course you're more than welcome to purchase it. You can get it on Kindle, etc. cetera. Um, again, the royalties go to the Hope for Justice. My mastermind program is a 12 month program that I run, which aims to amp up your human skills, which will make you really good at those things, that partnering, that fearlessness, that, you know, just making sure that you will not be replaced by those technology. Um, and of course, I have this amazing podcast, uh, Hiring Partner Perspective, unedited podcast where I interview hiring managers, which is very cool. I learn loads every time. I've been in the industry 18 years, so uh, definitely go and tune into that. So I'm up to the questions. I did see one which was Marvin's, wasn't it?
Um, what types of things can a recruiter do prior to the intake meeting that creates confidence, aka swagger, in pushing back? Actually, I think I just mentioned some of that. Um, Joe, my mastermind, obviously, Marvin, but um, Marvin, but almost a posture. It almost is that the I'm here to partner you. I'm here to work with you, and it's it's almost that that I feel works quite well. Right now, I believe I need to go back to Samantha if I've got it right. I will probably come back to your question, Marvin. There she is, right. So if I stop sharing. Oh, did everybody get there? Oh, we can come back to that. I can always share again. There we go. Okay. Awesome. Welcome, Trina. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, a lot of talking. <laughs> I like this bit much better. <laughs> so thank you for that. I think that was great. That was very insightful. That was quite fun and uh, definitely a lot of okay, important... <laughs> definitely a lot of you know important thoughts and practices mm. highlights so thank you for sharing katrina yeah uh, but before i move on uh, there is a request mm. that's come from an attendee who would like to know what the next steps are after you scan that qr code that you share so when if you used your camera you just open your camera it should have popped up uh, a website and then the website is you f just follow the link on it maybe they don't have a smartphone um, I'd like to now move on to our next segment and talk a little sure. bit more about uh, working better with hiring partners. I actually have a uh -huh. slide to share. Let me just quickly pull that up. Awesome. So, <laughs> Katrina, we spoke about, uh, you know, partnering, partnering with hiring managers and how mm -hmm. the lack of that is detrimental to recruitment. You covered a lot of points on how that is so wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. So what, to understand better, how much of a role should hiring managers actually play in the recruitment process? what are the areas that they should be participating in but currently aren't? Um, well, I mean, the, they're the ones hiring the role, so they play a huge part in it, right? But I think it's making sure that you define whose part, like it, it, you define each part, and I think this is what we don't do. So the hiring manager doesn't understand what we do and just sort of throws a job description at us and thinks the CVs just appear from the air, that kind of a thing. Um, sorry, I need to shut my email again after having opened it to send you that. I just put the book giveaway link in the, the, in the side there. Um, I mean, they play an important part because it's their role. So obviously it's incredibly important to them. But if you spend more time with them upfront, getting that information that you need and getting the agreement of how you're gonna to work together, then the whole thing's ease. So it's not like one should have more of a role than the other. Um, they might be super proactive. There are hiring managers out there are like, I wanna do videos, I wanna do this, I want and that's brilliant. But some aren't, but you've at least got to agree, this is how we are gonna to work together. I hope that yeah. makes sense. It does, it does. <laughs> oh, good. Sorry, I was a little bit like looking up the link at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. So I'm curious, I mean, you know, when you talk about the hiring managers that may not be mm -hmm. actively employed, involved in the process, mm -hmm. right, uh, hypothetically. So is there a way for recruiters to actually guide that involvement? Yeah, tell them no. <laughs> it's like, I know it sounds really arrogant, but it's almost a case of going, I'm not going to work with you unless you're going to give me the time up front. Now, I'm probably talking slightly more an in-house team when I'm talking. You know, I'm, I'm thinking talent acquisition professionals and recruitment partners and where they have more of an ability to do that. I appreciate it on an agency side. It's a lot harder because you've got the pressure of your leaders saying, you must bill, I need you to fill these roles. But it really, in both cases, is if they're not going to give you the time that you need to understand what their role is, you're going to waste hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of their time. Of course, you're going to waste yours as well, but it's their time. And it's going to muddy their reputation. So their employer brand is going to be worse. You probably get dodgy reviews. Uh, people are fully aware when the hiring manager doesn't really know what they're hiring for and they're wasting someone's time. So it's almost like, look, when you're ready to give me an hour of your time to talk this through properly and answer my many, many questions, um, you know, just for now, I'm just going to stop. Come back to me when you've got time. And I, I appreciate it. Culturally, that can be quite tough. Like from where, where you are in India, it can be really tough to culturally feel like you can do that. But I have noticed that the recruiters I have in the mastermind who are from India who've done that, I've really been surprised it has worked because they know that they're saving that person's time, 
let alone the, you know, the candidate's time and the company's reputation. It's all about how you do it and the way you kind of go into it and say, when you're ready, come back to me. <laughs> I know it's, it sounds really arrogant, but honestly, I just thought you were like, so I'm very direct, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you, so like you said, you know, I mean, communication, I think is, is extremely important to be very vocal yeah. about when you can't take on yeah. more and when you need help. So, yeah, you know, we know that hiring teams need to communicate, right? They need mm -hmm. to communicate yeah. fast, evaluate candidates oh. easily and, and, oh, sorry. Oh, there you are, back again. Oh, I was wondering if that was my end or your end. So we know they need to communicate and you kind of got stuck, which was quite hilarious to get stuck, frozen on the word communicate. <laughs> am, I, am, I still, yeah. am I still audible? You're still here. I, yeah. Okay. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Um, where did you lose me again? Just to communicate. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ironic. But <laughs> Ironically. <laughs> so like I was saying, right, so they need to communicate fast. It's, it's, it's it's imperative that they do. It's imperative that mm -hmm. recruiters and hiring managers work together on that. And yeah, and and you know, hiring teams typically have to evaluate candidates easily and and know what's going mm -hmm. on every step of the way. So mm -hmm. recruiters especially are are tasked with coordinating all of this communication, right? And mm -hmm. and it's not always a breeze. And uh, and it's not it's always not a always breeze. a breeze. It's not oh, always a breeze. No. It's not always a breeze, and especially things can get difficult if recruiters and hiring managers, that relationship is strained, mm -hmm. right? So that obviously is a cause for concern, um, especially when it's a team effort, like you said, and, you know, hiring mm -hmm. managers need to look at that collaboration quite differently. So I'm eager to learn, yeah. uh, Katrina, how do you actually help hiring managers patiently realize that it's time to change and time to actively start collaborating well? A lot of it is going out and doing your research. So the more you understand your marketplace, your competitors, your reputation, their reputation, like who's doing what well and where you are, um, what genuine salary bands are, like the more research you do, the more you understand, then the easier it is because you can talk it through with the hiring manager. Some of what you said is a human stuff which is the area I focus on. So it's like you're talking about distrust, say. So it's a case of getting under the skin of, well, the hiring manager doesn't want to work with me. They're not prepared to give me their time. Why is that? What's going on? And it's really dropping your own defences and really being curious what it is. Because it could be they had a really bad experience with a previous, a previous recruiter. They felt their time was wasted and they just don't want to talk to you. They're not interested. And so it's sort of like you're having to gain that trust and be curious to get to the bottom of it and to just gently influence them. This is all the stuff I do in the mastermind because it's all human to get them to that point. So, yeah, this is great to have technology to keep everything and your reminders in place and, you know, you've got all your search tools and all this kind of stuff. But if you don't have that basic upfront proper relationship, it's, it's going to filter all the way through. Um, so it's it's be curious like oh isn't that interesting they don't want to give me the time i wonder what that's about rather than oh damn it how dare they you know it's just curious what what have you had a bad experience with a recruiter is it have you had your time wasted what's your biggest concern here what how would you like to work with me what would be the best for you you know you may find that they don't want an email they want whatsapp you know, and we're spending all this time emailing them and they're like, why can't you just WhatsApp me? I'm not interested in doing email. My email is insane. I don't even want to look, open it, you know, and it's stuff like that. What, how do you, it's all of it. Like be curious, play, try different things, see what happens. I can see there's a hundred questions coming in, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it looks amazing. I'm trying not to be distracted by the side panel. <laughs> Actually, I shut the side panel, so I stopped reading them. It's gone. <laughs> Okay, do you want to, uh, would you like to take the questions now? Or would you like to it's take It's up to you. Up? It's up to you. It's your, it's your webinar. I'll just do it, I'm told. It's <laughs> okay, very can, rare. I'd embrace it. <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can take, we can take a few questions that have come in. Sure. Uh, so I think there's one from Marvin Smith again. Uh, do you advocate pre-work around the job requisition prior to the meeting? Uh, I don't actually know what Carmen does, uh, Marvin, uh, but totally, totally. Um, so 
chapter five of the book that I know is on your shelf, if this is the Marvin, I think it is, Marvin probably needs to tell me that, um, is absolutely like all of the stuff I was just saying, do the research. But I crowdsource chapter five. So Steve Levy, Maisha Cannon and Tanji Pettis helped me write that chapter. And in there, there are some amazing questions that you can be asking um, about sort of like, what problem is the person gonna come in and solve and all this sort of stuff. But the more that you understand your industry and your competition and how hard it is to recruit in your area and get to the really, the grid of it to really understand it, the easier it's gonna be. Um, oh, you, you moved it to answer. There was another one, wasn't there? No? Okay. <laughs> oh, no. That, Sorry. That was it's really question. funny when you're trying to answer a question and read at the same time. Dreadful, dreadful. Right. <laughs> okay. uh, so, so there's a second one. How? Uh, mm -hmm. This is from Sneha. How does a recruiter change perspective of the organization leaders who are on the hiring manager's side in hiring reviews and do not accept to understand hiring challenges? Well, that's stupid of them, isn't it? Um, <laughs> it's um, it's really about, you've got to talk their language. Um, so if you're now talking about leaders, leaders are often about the bottom line. And it's kind of going in with the stats of, well, we're having to go out to market this number of times and that's costing us this much money. And then we can't hire that person and then that's costing you that much money because you can't deliver those projects over there. Um, and then when we do hire someone, well, actually technically they're not the right fit because the hiring manager is, doesn't know what they're doing and they're not hiring the right person. Don't phrase it like that, by the way, but you know what I mean. Um, it, and therefore, you know, the project's failing or they're failing and they're leaving. You can actually make this into pounds, dollars and cents or whatever you want to do, you, know, you can absolutely put it in a currency that they understand. That's what leaders are interested in. They're interested in the profit and the productivity. So if you can show that more upfront time, more investment in the people, bringing in the people delivers more productivity and cost savings, they will absolutely be on your side. You have to talk their language. Um, much as, you know, we might just be like, oh, listen, that hiring manager and shake them because they won't talk to me it's more going in with look this particular hire or these hiring managers you might want to single one out aren't doing this and this is what the cost is to the company it can all be worked out to, to dollars and cents it's just yeah because you'll be wasting this their time as well and their time you know that's easy to work out from their salary what an hourly rate is for example so hopefully that understand it it was a bit of a waffly answer <laughs> So it's funny when you're doing them on the fly. <laughs> right, so there's another one from Marvin. Yeah. I think the most challenging element to engaging tech talent is crafting messages that resonate uh -huh. with them. How do you get a hiring yeah. manager to provide the persona insight into why tech talent should speak with your firm? Uh, I mean, again, that's going into that questioning. So the more you understand the marketplace, so the more you can go in and say, yeah, no, that's great. But, you know, there are five data scientists in the entire world that can do the job that you're wanting. So what do you think we need to say to them to stand out from all of the other 3000 recruiters going for those same five people? So it's a lot of the time it's going in with the facts and the stats and the, you know, this is this is the challenge and also what would you want to hear if someone was approaching you for this role what would you want to hear and what is this person going to be doing when they come in How, what what pro the steve levy question what problem are they going to solve what is it going to be like in six months for them what areas of growth do they have what what makes us special over everyone else and it's not your bean bags and it's not your free lunch and it's not any of that it's literally the challenge of the job or perhaps the mission of the company but it's the more you ask the, the greater it's going to be um, and to flip it back on them and just say, look, I, I've, I've run a quick search. I know there's five in the entire world that can do this job. Why should any of them talk to us? What, what, what would you need to hear if you were in that job? Question, 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 curiosity, curiosity. We're recruiters, we're great at questioning. Just get super, super curious and just keep your defensiveness down because it's really easy to get agitated when they're not answering us properly. Just be like, oh, can you just explain a bit more? And sometimes, it's, it's almost that thing of being vulnerable. Again, this is why I do this human stuff because it's like, you have to be a bit vulnerable. You say, can you explain that to me another way? So always asking someone to explain it another way is always a great way to get around the, I don't understand what they just said. Can you just rephrase that for me? Or is there another way that you could put that? Because I, I just want to make sure I really get it. The more, the more understanding you have of the role, the opportunity and all of that, the easier all of that is. 
Um, I, I find too often, um, you know, particularly with tech talent, they're getting the, you know, hot job, urgent requirement, Java developer, you know, please speak to me now. And the Java developer is like, whatever, I get 20 of these a day. Whereas, you know, a company that comes in and is explaining, we are doing this, we have this problem, we can't fix it, would this interest you to help us fix? Is gonna go, oh, that's interesting. Again, that's Steve Levy. <laughs> she might've stolen it from Carmen though, Mar Marvin, <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> okay, is this another one? Da, da, da. Yes. Uh, so I, I expect feedback Krishna on Priya. how I'm doing here, Marvin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> This, this is from Krishna Priya. How can we mm -hmm. explain that we are not finding right candidates for the position of the hiring managers when they are actually pushing back on scheduling interviews? Mm -hmm. Easy. Sit with them and show them what you do. <laughs> Sorry, just for mama's answer. Thank you. Um, sit with them and show them what you do. Okay, technically we can't sit with them, but we can all share a screen, right? jump on a zoom teams whatever you have to use i'm so sorry if you have to use google meet and share your screen and show them what you do okay so you're asking for this this is how i go about finding them okay there's no point me putting an advertisement out there because these people don't apply this is how i run a search this is how i use linkedin this is how i use the technical sites whatever it is go get yan tegs's book if you need to know how to source from a bigger pool he's, he's written it out in great detail but literally show them what you do to find people and then you can see okay i've run this search from what you've said and i've got five people we need to change something here you want to push interviews i'd love to push interviews but there are five people on the planet that can do what you're asking let's start taking out some of those must-haves when they start seeing it and they're sitting there with you and sourcing with you you will change their mind in a heartbeat they honestly think that these cvs float down from heaven into our inbox until we tell them differently, they'll continue thinking that. They really do. It sounds dreadful, but they do. <laughs> so, um, you know, when I think of it, and I have I have a tricky question, tricky slash Ooh, interesting exciting. question. Okay. And, and, I'm gonna and rearrange this, my seat so I'm ready, okay. <laughs> and this goes back, and, and this goes back to when you were talking about, you know, how hiring managers at times could, could really not be as responsive as you need them to be, right? Uh, they, yeah. they don't give you all the details that you actually need to know and details that yeah. can be of help to, to move forward in the recruitment process. Yep. So, and I'm sure we have a lot of, you know, such cases out there. So what about those slippery hiring managers, right? The one who are too busy uh, to respond, hard to track down, make excuses for delaying mm -hmm. uh, selection, never offer feedback about resume rejections, right? Mm -hmm. During the entire process. Hiring managers who are typically hard to even reach when mm -hmm. you really need them how do you how do you rein them in when you're working with them so it's all going to come back to the do you get the initial meeting because honestly if you're not getting the initial meeting you know they're going to be like that through the entire process so it's a case of <coughs> <coughs> posture I, I know it sounds crazy but you try sitting up and talking to them sitting up and because most of us tend to end up like this sit up when you're talking to them now if they're not going to give you the initial hour they're not going to give you the rest of it right if you can do that initial start and you start gaining their trust and you start having those conversations about how do you want to work with me how does it suit you first oh i just i just want you to throw stuff at okay well we can't do that because if we do that it's going to be really difficult for you to recruit in the future or i'm going to waste hours and hours and hours and hours of your time now i know you don't want to waste hours of your time do you so what about this Okay, yes, no, blah, blah, blah. right, back forth, back forth. It's a negotiation and you're there to partner because you're sitting up straight, ready to partner. Um, and it's literally, if they won't give that, then it's like, okay, come back to me when it's really urgent and we'll talk. Now you need to know that your head of recruitment talent acquisition is going to have your back and that you can do that. So I would recommend that you speak to them and you say, okay, we're dealing with Bob. We know Bob's a drama. This is the way I'm going to treat Bob. I'm going to tell him that when it's mission critical, the project's going to fail, he's going to like lose his job or he's going to get go off with stress leave because he hasn't filled this role that to come back to when he's at that point, because unless he's going to give you the time and the respect uh, up front, the information that you need, the whole process is going to fail. Now, it used to be that that was fine, because when I started out in my world of work, 
I, I couldn't see what jobs were out there. Now I can go to the internet and I can see what jobs are out there. I can see how many opportunities there are at all the other country uh, companies and I can see all of the reputations. I can see the social media sites. I can see oh, Reddit, for example. I can see what's being said. So I don't have to work for that company. So it's like, it's different. And they just need to understand that. Particularly if you are dealing, sorry, Marvin, with older hiring managers who probably don't understand how much recruitment has changed in the last 10 years. So it's a case of just educating them, educating them all the time with a very soft tone, not being patronizing them, just explaining, you know, this is how the world is now. You're aware that all this sort of stuff shows so if we have a problem, it's going to end up on the internet. that will make it difficult to hire. You know, if you, if you interview too many people and waste their time, they'll write bad reviews that will stop you hiring in the future, you know, so on. So when you have the time, let's chat. Then just, yeah, that sort of stuff. Okay. I could talk about this for like the next hour. So you stand warned. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, intake strategies, right? Clearly the most important thing to do. And and yeah. for recruiters just starting off who have who haven't conducted or, or been part of an intake strategy meeting in the past yeah. I mean, there could there could be a common concern about it being too time consuming and taking away yeah. a lot of hours from their pocket. So what is your advice to them, Katrina? The for, recruiter's pocket or the hiring manager's pocket? The recruiters. Yeah, no, it their- never it never takes too much time away from the recruiters. If you don't, uh, if you do not spend that upfront time, you are just going to waste so much time. So I'm saying to you, tell the hiring manager that they're wasting their time. They're wasting your time as well. But we don't tell them that because they're only interested in what's in it for them, as is everybody, by the way. You know, anyone that opens your message when you message them on LinkedIn about a role is only interested in what's in it for them. So it's the same thing. So the more time you spend up front, the I mean, you will say, I, I can't believe how much time down the line, hours upon hours. Because if you really understand the team, the dynamic, the culture, that hiring manager, what they're coming in to do and all of that, that upfront time, you'll, you'll know immediately when you're talking to someone, oh, they're going to be perfect for this. They've got exactly what I need. And you will just, you, honestly, you'll save yourself so much time. Um, Marvin will back me up on that, I'm sure. I bet he spends hours doing the, the upfront rather than the down the line stuff. Because what yeah. wouldn't you rather? And also it's going to make you look great because you'll have, fewer CVs, more interviews, more placements rather than, you know, a hundred CVs and, and one placement kind of thing. So. Right. Right. And it also gives you a clear path to move forward. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hassle-free. You want to, you want to stand out, you know, your, your messaging. So actually here's another way of looking at it. How many of you have been distracted, even though I'm high energy and very entertaining and love laughing at myself. How many times have you looked at your phone, got an email, had a notification and got distracted in the last 54 minutes. Lots, right? And that's what we're fighting against. So not only are we fighting with, you know, a developer who's who's incredibly sought after because, you know, they've got skills that are in demand. There's so many job opportunities. There's something like five job, job opportunities for every developer here in London, right? Five jobs for every developer. It's such a shortage. So they're getting inundated with emails. So there's all of that noise. And then there's all their day-to-day noise. Slack's going off, notifications going off. Everyone wants their attention. And it's like, <gasps> it's overwhelm. You need to be heard over that. And the only way you will is to stand out by actually knowing what that person's going to come in and do. And again, it goes back, to, it all goes back to that. It all goes back to the relationship. And that all comes back to your human skills and your ability to, to really say, I'm here to partner you. You know, so hours <laughs> <laughs> well awesome uh, Ranting. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that uh, that's okay i think we're ready we're ready for i'm gonna have some i'm gonna have a sip of water i'm sorry oh yeah that's totally fair i can see there's like 300 emails coming in my inbox already so mm-hmm. i will i will do an actual draw mm. okay so someone will get yeah it's very busy in there so i can see lots of people were able to use the uh lead notification which is so cool um and obviously it's only for people that are live so when you send yeah so the replay it's only for the live yeah so I know that the I know it'll be in the middle of the replay but this is just so if you're watching a replay there's a benefit of turning up live (laughs) (laughs) well awesome um Karina thank you for that I think uh, we with that we're ready to move into the Q&A but 
we've covered a lot of the we've questions that have come in. <laughs> we do have we do have a few that have actually come in via chat, and I'm going to actually bring oh, them yeah. now since we have a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, there's one from Amanda. Do you create rubrics for every interview panel? I'm trying to think of ways to remove bias, and I think a rubric would be a solution, but it takes extra time, and I'm struggling to get commitment from the hiring managers. Have you tried this? I, I and don't know what a rubric is. Sorry. That, that could be terminology of that country strike company. I don't know right. what that is. I understand. Um, so Amanda, if you're listening- you know what that is? Yeah. I don't, I don't, huh. I don't. So um, in fact, I was going to um, request Amanda, if you're, if you're still on, please feel free to clarify what a rubric is. So, you know, we can yeah. better address that question. Meanwhile, I'll move, uh, I'll move on to the next question from James. Mm -hmm. What strategies do you implement for attracting diverse candidates to the organization and job postings? Mm -hmm. I have used professional mm -hmm. networks, LinkedIn searches. Are there any? Yeah, okay. So I'm not a diversity expert, but what I did with an IT company last year um, was run facilitation with their hiring managers, their HR and their recruiters, the talent acquisition team, because they weren't open to it because we're human beings and we have natural biases, they weren't open to hiring diversity. So it didn't really matter that you went and attracted diverse candidates because they wouldn't hire them. I know that sounds really bad, but it, it's sometimes people don't even realize they're doing it. Um, and, and it was things like, oh, we can't hire females because they might go off and have babies. And we're like, oh my God. Um, it, literally that was what was coming out of the conversation. But by going through the facilitation process, they could start unearthing actually what the problems were and what areas they needed improvement on before they did that. So I know I'm not quite answering your question, but sometimes we've got the, the cart ahead of the horse instead of the horse in front of the cart. So something to think about. Um, as far as attracting diverse candidates, I and mean, really it depends in, in what way. I mean, if we're talking more women, maybe you should be advertising a mum's net rather than, you know, advertising on LinkedIn where maybe they're not hanging out. So it's all about who you're hiring and where to go and look. Um, again, I go back to Jan Tegs's book. Um, he has written in such depth on so many different ways to source that if you think of his as the Bible and mine as the hymnal, they work quite well together. <laughs> Mine's all about the human being and the outreach bit and his is all about all different, lots of different places you can source. So, oh, here we go. Uh, Amanda, creating a list of quantitative traits, skills that interviewers should follow. I darling, removing the gut feeling. Um, I am not an interview expert, uh, to be honest. So I'm probably not the best person to answer that. Um, but I would hope that you would do that long before interview anyway, because that would be the sort of stuff you'd be wanting to understand right back in that intake strategy session again as making sure I'm not hiring the people I like because I might need to be hiring someone completely opposite to me. So, you know, I, so for example, um, like my brother, <laughs> bless him, he's completely the opposite. Like he's the accountant, he's the, the logic person and I'm the intuit. So it's like, we're so different as far as I'm all emotion and feeling and he's all logic. So it's like, uh, but you know, it's probably not, it's more difficult because of the liking thing. So I would take that actually back to the intake and then it would, you wouldn't need to do it at the interview stage. You should know before, shouldn't you? Happy to be corrected if I'm wrong. <laughs> Amanda, feel free to like take this up with me afterwards because I appreciate we've run out of time, haven't we? Yes, um, and, and, well. and I'm always happy to be wrong. <laughs> well, that was great. Um, Katrina, thank you for that. It looks like that was our last thank question. You. And with that, our webinar has come to an end. Katrina, thank you so much you. for sharing your thoughts, your strategies, your, you know, the valuable insights. I know I speak for all the attendees when I say, I think we're definitely working away with a lot of understanding, right? On how to partner better with hiring managers yeah. and how we can bring in that, hum that lost human touch, right? Yeah. Uh, Go back to, to basics. Right, to, to, to make things work. And I think it all starts with mm. that initial communication, that intake strategy uh, to, to power. Actually through. just some, I know we're running over like well, one minute. The, something else just to think about, there's a lot of fear out there at the moment because of the pandemic. And there'll be a lot of fear of people not wanting to change jobs going forward. So your ability to use those human skills is gonna be even more important when you're wooing people through the process as well going forward. Something else to think about, sorry. I didn't mention that at any point, but it's another side to it, the candidate side. It's gonna be tough. Absolutely. for a while.
Right, right. Well, thank anyway. you again. <laughs> thank, thank you, you. again, <laughs> Katrina. Definitely more motivated to try out this approach. Starts with the communication, the basics, and keep it simple. Yes. Perfect. Thank you again. Is there anything else, <laughs> Katrina, you would like to add before we wrap up? No, I think I'm done. You all know where I am. LinkedIn, anywhere else. Google me. I'm everywhere. <laughs> I have one of those names. <laughs> awesome. Anyway, thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you so much, Katrina, again. It was a pleasure hosting you today. And um, thank you. thanks, everyone, to who attended. We hope you enjoyed the session. And we definitely love to hear your feedback on the survey form mm -hmm. that you will receive soon after the webinar ends. This is your host, Samantha, signing off. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.